believe in their mission, like mm-hmm. that having that in your heart, that's evidence enough. Everything else is your opportunity for healing. The mission is all the evidence that you need to be successful in entrepreneurship. There's no competition in our industry because they're like, oh, I know it's that the way that this lady talks about the work, she's the one I want to work with. And that's why being so committed to healing through your own blocks and showing up in your authenticity and, and following that, that cadence and that truth is the only way to be successful because then you become a lighthouse for the mission and the people who have been looking for you can't find you if you're hiding away from that. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Witchy Wellness Radio. Again, I am your host, Lauren, and this is a show where you learn how your body and emotions are not in the way they are leading the way. And today we're talking with Kara Kovacs. She is here to talk about mindset, embodiment, value-driven business building, and money work for none other than us, the witches. Anybody who's listening to this is going to probably resonate more about Kara. She is an intersectional feminist, trauma-informed empowerment coach. Coaching is the art of taking radical responsibility for all of who we are. In her work with her clients, Kara also helps to connect the dots between the past, the future with vision, inspiration, compassion, and momentum that causes the kinds of shifts that you've been looking for to become the very magic that you create so much more on Kara. I don't want to read the rest of this bio because I want to hear it from straight from her, but welcome Kara. Thank you for coming on the show today. Yes. Thank you for taking the time to chat and for introducing me to your community. Oh my goodness. A fellow witch here where I'm sure we're all very excited here. I found in my own journey and so many women who listen to the show is, you know, we go through our own heroine's journey or hero's journey. We heal something part of us. And the first thing we want to do is give back. You know, we're the healers, the the medicine women, or, you know, you just want to build something creative to give some beauty back into the world. And then we realize our healing process starts all over again as we start our own businesses. <laughs> yeah. Which I know you really, you really combine this mindset and embodiment in a different way when you work with women this way. But I would love Mm -hmm. to hear your own journey of how this unfolded that you now help guide women to really scale and build their their passion business, their true purpose and calling this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was in grad school at NYU for social work and NYU costs about $60,000 a year to attend. And I I realized that I was paying that amount of money for a job that I was going to be making about $43,000 a year at the time. That was the average annual salary of social workers, which I think, you know, to talk, to speak to how undervalued women's labor is like that housekeeping and caretaking and doulaing and midwifing is like something that has just been freely given and not even exchanged for money historically. And then now we see the reflection of that and how underpaid social workers and teachers and helping professionals are. But I was like, how how am I going to be able to afford to live in New York City? The the math is just not, (laughs) it's not adding up. (laughs) I was kind of like, shit. (laughs) (laughs) I, you know, I thought my whole life I was going to be a therapist. I remember when I went to therapy, Uh, I think I was like 12 and it was this like beautiful purple room and I really needed to be there for another hero's journey that we don't need to talk about right now. But like that I felt this calling to practice emotionally supporting people through difficult challenges and transitions. And also I was like, like, I don't want to live in an outer borough with four roommates and no additional income to be able to go out to dinner. Like this is just not, it's not financially feasible. So I actually dropped out of grad school and I didn't know (laughs) what I was going to do instead. And that's really how I found coaching. And I think a lot of people find coaching because they are attracted to the idea of there being an unlimited income cap that you can really earn. And I, I mean, 
the best job security that I believe any of us can have is to trust ourselves to make money doing the work that we want to be doing. To actually learn that as a skill in entrepreneurship is so liberating because it means that we are no longer beholden, not only to maybe a job that we don't like, but also a company that could go under. I think we're seeing that now in tech for a lot of people, for example. Um, or we saw that during the pandemic that people had jobs, all of a sudden they didn't have jobs. So when I decided to become a coach instead, it felt like I could merge therapy with this thing that really allowed me the freedom to make more money. And what I should say is less than 1% of coaches, according to the International Coaching Federation, ever cross the multi six figure mark. And that 75% of coaches make less than the median income for a coach, which is $61,000 a year. But I think that online entrepreneurship really positions the coaching industry as a space where you can make tons and tons and tons of money. Um, and this is true, but it really needs to be backed up by a mission that people can connect to and can feel resonance with. And there's like a lot of clarity and precision of care and depth of care that needs to coincide with trying to build that kind of online business so that it's not just like using the right SEO to get people into your program. It's delivering on the transformational results that are like really why people should become coaches if they want to in the first place to deliver on that transformation. So for me, I was just in this position of like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to afford to live the life that I want to live. And so I built, <laughs> I built the alternate road, you know, I like paved it myself. And I think that that's really what entrepreneurship is, is like, oh, here's this mountain. I'm going to literally get on my hands and knees with a shovel and like carve the path to the top of the mountain. And any entrepreneur who is committed to doing that for themselves is on a hero's journey. Um, and it is not easy, but it is honestly so, so, so rewarding. Because what I will say is if you do have a very strong mission, it is actually impossible to fail. You just like troubleshoot. You're like, oh, I hit this place in the mountain where I'm being forced to turn and go in a different direction, or I'm learning how to make this process go faster or be um, like more successful. And that's really the gift of it. If you approach it that way, that you can't fail, but you have to have that kind of mindset. And you also have to have the starting point be the mission. And the mission for me is really about bringing some of the things that I found to be so important from the therapeutic background that are often missing in the coaching space. So as you mentioned, that intersectional feminist perspective, trauma-informed care, and really value-aligned mission-driven entrepreneurship, as opposed to, I want to make money because this sounded like a good idea because I took like a master class, <laughs> which no shame on that. I'm here because I want to make a lot of money, but the most money that you can make is really from having a strong mission that you're inviting people to participate in. And if you're missing that and you're not getting the results that you want, go back to your why, go back to your why. Everything built from a why is so much easier to say yes to. Yes, 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 yes. I remember <laughs> reading was it Simon Sinek? Start with why he, that book. I haven't came, read it. Ah, uh, well, that's the whole book. Spoiler alert! If you guys haven't <laughs> read it, it's you know it's a marketing book. It's but it's the same thing. Is start with your why, and even just in yourself and in your life, if you want to make any change, whether you're building a business or just want to become a different person, mm -hmm. I think it's so important to always go back to that why that mission you said because. Mm. that's like the the foundations because we're going things are gonna unexpected are gonna pop up challenges are gonna pop up but when you have that secure foundation bell that you can go back to you know like you said you act, you, you can't fail if you mm. keep going back to that and I think for myself being on this journey without that secure foundation mm -hmm. it's like what am I doing? You know, the, the imposter syndrome easily can creep up the, you know, just a lack of clarity. Anything in life is really hard to keep going when you change. So I guess if somebody, you know, has done more than just watch a masterclass and wants to help people. <laughs> yeah. And no shade. I mean, that's no, how no, no shade. Started, I, I, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's how, yeah. I mean, I spent hours and hours, you know, reading books, listening to back then, like before I knew about Audible, I'd get CDs, books on tape or CDs from the library and like, <laughs> wait, you know, 
I was like way back then, but 10 plus years ago. I'm like, yeah, I just, I would build my confidence and cha- start changing in my life and then start mm-hmm. to get the certifications and just want to help people. Because like I said, the more you grow, the more you want to give that back. And then a lot of money beliefs might pop up. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to, to hear, you know, how, what your approach is to that money work for witches, like you said, I said in the bio, like what is, I'm sure you have a beautiful, beautiful perspective on that, Mm. but I would just love to to start to dive in there. Yeah. Talking about money is actually one of my favorite things to coach on because it's so intimate. Like I, I led a book club here in LA on some of my favorite money books. um, And we started last month And I had them all write, like, what is the first emotion that comes up for you when you think about money? And it's like, majority of it is negative. (laughs) So even though it's like a thing that we all want, majority of the time, it's like overwhelm, incompetence, anxiety, trauma, like guilt, whatever. Like, it's just, it's such a uh, weighted concept. And the other reason I love coaching on money besides the fact that it's like so loaded, like, especially as someone who in my private client roster, I coach both entrepreneurs and teams and coaches. So I have these like two facets of my business where all of those people need coaching on money. Um, But when I coach coaches on money, it's like they are responsible for coaching their own clients on money. And you can't take anybody somewhere you're not willing to go. And I find that because it's such a loaded and emotional topic, it's the place where the majority of my clients get very uncomfortable and they go from feeling totally in flow with their magical space holding abilities and like joy about potentially connecting with people. And then they get to the part of the call where they have to actually name their rate And that lovely embodied presence goes out the window. And that is just like wild to me, not because I didn't used to be that way, because I totally did, but because the amount of power and energetic resonance this topic (laughs) pulls up for people when it's such a necessary component of selling services is so loaded. And I don't think that it has to be that way. Because, so this is this is really the crux of why I love coaching on this. One of the books that we're doing in, in Money Making Book Club uh, is A Happy Pocket Full of Money by David Jacondi. And he writes, it's, it's a very dense book. It's the kind of book that you like have to read the same page three times to like make sure you get it. It's not like something that is a fun light read, but it is so transformative because he starts the book, he's talking about the quantum physics of money. And he starts the books basically saying that only 2% of the money that exists in the physical reality, like only 2% of all the money in the entire world. So bills, gold, coins, 2% of the money exists in the physical reality. 98% of money is a theoretical concept that we've all decided to buy into that we agree with is a thing. Whereas historically, like you would trade something that has value, like I'm going to give you some chickens if you give me some cows or whatever, like we would exchange actual um, things that are real in the tangible reality. And now when somebody buys coaching from me, they're essentially sending like zeros and ones on a screen (laughs) into my bank account. So like, we're talking about something that isn't real. Like when most, I see this a lot in the coaching industry, people coach on money and they're like, money is energy. You have to be in like the energy of money. And I think that that actually gives money more power because again, we're talking about something that's not real. (laughs) So when you are able to remove that, like when you're able to say, okay, objectively, I'm talking about something that we just all agree is real. What is, what is the actual energy that is real or not real? And I think that that energy, for me at least, I think it's helpful for people to do some inner work about like where this lands for them. But for me at least is abundance, the energy of abundance. And there are so many ways in which all of us are already so abundant. The majority of the people listening to this, we're listening on our like 
personal handheld device that gives us access to all of the information everywhere all at once. <laughs> like we're eating incredibly delicious food. We have a safe home to live in. Like we are more abundant than most generations, despite the fact that, yeah, like millennials are less well off financially than our parents' generation because of like student debt and the current economic climate. Like there are problems. I'm not saying there aren't problems, but the energy of abundance exists already in your life. And if you are like abundant in love or community, connection, friendship, but you feel insecure about receiving abundance around money, that's the actual work that you're doing is allowing yourself to feel abundant in that area so that you can have a base level competency to have that conversation without shutting down and then like losing the sale, not actually even supporting your client because they're stuck in their own money story. And then you're just reiterating, I think particularly for women, this idea that our skills are not valid or valuable enough to receive compensation for in a way that actually makes us feel abundant, that we should be giving helping professional space holding for free. And you're perpetuating the very ideology that you're trying to deconstruct. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. I think for me, when money, the fear and the lack feeling comes up the opposite side of feeling abundance, getting outside, like being in nature, nature is so abundant, whether it's the middle of winter or the summer, no matter where you live. I mean, there's plants, grass, you know, even just looking at the sky and the clouds, just like seeing how nature is always abundant. There's never like a lack in, in mm -hmm. nature. And that always just makes me, well, first of all, I'm always barefoot, so I feel grounded, but that, because <laughs> it gets you outside of the whole, if you're feeling really triggered by money or the energy, like you said, because it gives it more of a power to totally switch it, go general in a different direction, like nature. That mm -hmm. has always really, 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 really helped me because, yeah, being an entrepreneur, switching from that, like, maybe you, you've you been an employee, maybe you've just been a student your life, but switching from that student employee mindset, that like doer, I don't know, say doer, follower, maybe mindset mm -hmm. into, I create my own reality. I create my own business. Like sometimes they're there's like that transition to, yes, that'll bring up the money stuff. But then it's like, oh, you know, my journey is like, oh, I was a good girl, got the good grades, got the, went to a good school, got the degree, got the job, blah, 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 crossed it off. And then trying to make this transition and go, holy crap, what, you know, like, I thought I had my shit together here, people, I think. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you work with people transitioning out of have, you know, being in that mindset and then going, wanting to go full into that business and mm -hmm. really feeling that mindset shift, because I think that's a little bit to do with abundance, but it's really like taking that ownership, right. Of like mm -hmm. knowing what to do and that confidence too. And feeling, I think safety yes. is a huge component of it. So like what you're saying, if you've been uh, conditioned to expect a certain amount of money to show up in your bank account bi-weekly, and all of a sudden it's not there, like as somebody who's been in the multi six figure range for the last three years, I don't get the same amount of money in my bank account every month. And I think something harmful about the coaching industry is that we teach people like get a 10K month, get a 10K month, get a 10K month. And that's actually like not how my business operates. And I don't know anybody who in entrepreneurship is like meeting a metric like that in a repetitive way. Like I might have a launch where I make 50 or 60 or 70K in a month and then have like payment plans rolling in for three months and I'm strategizing the next launch. In terms of scaling, if you want to have a six or seven figure business, you do need to make a certain amount of money per month, but it's actually not sustainable to relate to money in the same way as like, I'm going to be getting this paycheck or it's not sustainable to relate to your schedule in the way that like you've been conditioned to view your schedule. So just some of the things that you're saying about like when you make that leap or that transition, it's about rewiring how you relate to what you've been conditioned and told to believe you should want that actually wasn't satisfying you anyway, which is why you left, but you're still expecting it to look like that thing. And, and then you feel stuck, right? You think you're doing something wrong. And there's a lot of like 
shame and fear and anxiety that comes up in that, that I see with people all of the time. And that's not a sign that you're doing anything wrong. That's a sign that you're doing everything right. Like, of course you're feeling those things. And I think that entrepreneurship is such a cool space where we get to heal those things in ourselves because they bring it to the forefront of our consciousness to be worked through. Like, oh, if I am going to sell something, I actually have to be confident in how I talk about that. And I can't bypass, like, you know, when I work with someone and they're like, I wish that like clients would just fall into my inbox and I didn't have to like share about my services. And it's like, okay, then why do you want to be a coach? I get it that when you're actually on the call, you like serving the person. That's great. But if you don't like talking about what you do, you don't have to have a major social media presence. You don't have to have a podcast. But like, if you don't like talking about what you do, there is a gap between why you want to do this and who you're actually serving because you don't even want to tell them. And like, you can work on that and you can heal that or you can stay exactly where you are. And that's just one example of like, you know, 30, probably more that I could come up with of the kinds of things that come up for people as they're starting to make that transition. Yeah, I think for me, I was so stuck in the, well, once I have all of XYZ together or the clarity, everything come together, then I'll take the leap, then I'll do this. And like the if then mentality, instead of just like, you know, trusting in a way right and and I think instead of being in the I can't do this or if them mindset switching into the like why not now like if not now when kind of idea because I think my belief is part of like my mission is you know once we we all have our own like sacred note in the symphony of life Mm -hmm. and we're here to really share that calling with the world and when we can do that not only we change our own reality in terms of abundance and our own lifestyle but we're really we're upgrading humanity's consciousness itself so it's like it's selfish not to Mm -hmm. shine your light it's selfish not to help other people because that's that's like why we're here and that's something i'm part of my foundation i have to go back to but for people you know that are like wishy-washy in this Mm -hmm if then, you know, kind of situation, what advice do you have for them that are listening to this? They're like, oh, I know what I want to do, but uh, not yet. (laughs) Knowing that you want to do is all the evidence that you need. Because I think a lot of wishy-washy for some people is they don't have a clear enough mission. And they're still in the headspace of like, I think it would be cool if I got to talk to cool people about their problems and made a lot of money doing that. That's not a clear enough mission. It's just not. But if you know why you want to help people, nobody's benefiting from you hiding, least of all you. Like you are robbing the people who need your help from being able to find you. And it it is selfish to actually do that because the only excuse that you have is your desire to not be uncomfortable. And I think a lot of people stay in bad relationships like that for years because they don't desire to go through the discomfort of having to like change their life or change their pattern or whatever. A lot of people stay in friendships where they build resentment or they stay in jobs that they hate. And again, that's why I really do see entrepreneurship as like a deeper opportunity for healing than gets spoken about enough. And maybe it is the witch in me or the therapist in me that like, views it that way, that it's going to pull up all of that stuff. If you're a procrastinator, well, you can't do that in your business. Like if you are wishy-washy and you don't have clarity, well, that's not going to fly. If you are lacking in self-confidence and self-love, like that's going to come up in in my own journey as an entrepreneur. You know, I was very uh, eager to give up my power to the people who I thought were like further along than me. Like I would just adopt things that people told me because I thought they were right because they were more successful than I was. And it took a lot of critical thinking to actually learn self-trust to decipher like, this is for me and this is not for me. And this is how I actually want to do it my way. Like even just for example, the thing about money being energy, like that is so, uh, something that is so deeply ingrained in coaching rhetoric where people talk about it. And I've been coached by people who believe that. And also if you believe that and that works for you, don't listen to me. (laughs) But what I found with my clients is that that hasn't actually supported them And in shifting the perspective, more space opens. And that's why people would come to me as opposed to somebody else. 
But that required me to confront within myself, like, wow, I'm pretty much just like parroting off things that people I perceive to be more successful than me told me was the right way to do this. Like another example of this is like how you do one thing is how you do everything. People love saying that in coaching. And like, that's not true. Like I procrastinate doing certain chores in my house every single week. And I never procrastinate on work stuff. I never procrastinate uh, like with my exercise routine, but like I procrastinate taking out the garbage or like buying, like, it's just not the same with my friends. I'm avoidant with my partner. I'm anxious. <laughs> like how you do one thing is not how you do everything. And people use that in coaching to draw comparisons between scenarios and paint a picture of someone that can actually be really disempowering and harmful to them. And then use that sort of like blanket statement as an excuse to do that. And like, that's not why we do this work. But it was only through learning discernment, which took me years as a coach. It took me years. I've been in, in business now for five years. I did not know that until probably a year ago. And it it was a really big opening for me in my business of like, oh, I'm actually here to teach coaching differently than most people are talking about it. And I wouldn't have known that had I not participated in something that I'm now realizing I don't believe in anymore. And so for people who are waiting to start, you can't have all the pieces until you work with enough people to fine tune your methodology, to learn yourself. Every time you scale or you charge more or you build infrastructure or you bring on a team member, you go through the same kind of like up system upgrade, I guess you could call it, where you're like relearning and reconfronting fundamental things that you believe about yourself or your mission or the business or visibility or whatever, or money. And you have to grow through those things. And if you don't want to do that, <laughs> get a job. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally, and I'm like, I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm like, been, go, been there, done that, you know, the highs and lows of being able to hold myself accountable and like not wanting to settle my life, whether it be relationships, career, happiness but that means that continual change right that continual overcoming and I think that's like for me personally I think that's why a lot oh, not a lot of us all of us are here is for whatever growth we're supposed to have this lifetime and yeah sometimes you get stuck in the the settling kind of energy and that literally you know I was stuck in the settling relationship for you know years where should I go? Should I say, well, it's not that bad. And I think one of the things when it you are, it's, you know, there's whatever part of your life, it's not, there's not super contrasty, like this is a clear hell no, but you're like, well, you know, it should be fine. Or this, this job is okay. It's not that bad. And I find myself saying it's not that bad instead of like, this is freaking exciting or this scares me this is this dream is so big like mm -hmm. the difference in energy between those two for me I can feel like physically my life force like what excites me what scares me because excitement and scared are mm -hmm. kind of really similar depending on what's coming up for me and just like being so done with settling and debating in myself of like should I stay or go what and at whatever area of my life literally like tear t tore me apart and to be like having the clarity and just going for it and knowing as you take that step like the cl more clarity will appear like you said in any area of your life whether it's business relationships doesn't matter it just naturally you're gonna refine as you keep taking the steps if you just stay still and like want to hide in the ball or whatever coping me mechanism pops up for you it's, it's hard. It's hard to really change or heal anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you Libra? I'm Sagittarius. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you have Libra placements or no? <laughs> I think, I think my, my moon's in Libra, I believe. I just feel Libra. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We'll see. I'm pretty, really sure it's a, I'm pretty sure it's I think my moon is. Why am I blanking? Yeah, I, but I'm Scorpio rising. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I 
also use astrology with my clients. Oh, I mean, come on. You're on Mission Wellness <laughs> Radio here. So we, we welcome all. All yeah, this is things. right. I know. And then that, that I think too, I mean, it's a, a slight pivot, but I think it's related to what we're talking about yeah. in terms of like, there is a space for me to, I coach uh, the first black queer owned barista invented oat milk company. So a bunch of baristas got together and they invented, it's called ghost town oats coming soon to a coffee shop near you. Um, but it froths better than traditional oat milk, which was like an industry problem, right? And they invented, it's delicious, this great oat milk. They have been in business for about two years. We just surpassed a million dollars and a million cartons sold. And their founder loves astrology. <laughs> like I met her at a party of a mutual friend who is an astrologer. And so like our client coach relationship just kind of happened very organically where it made like, there was nobody else she could have hired because we're like, oh yeah, ghost towns chart and your chart. And she was on my podcast. You can actually like, there's a whole episode on this of her talking about the astrology of her company. And I don't think that when I started, despite the fact that I love astrology, I've been studying it for over a decade. I don't think that when I started, I realized that it was possible for me to have a coaching practice where loving astrology was an asset for the right clients to find me and be like, oh, I love that my coach is able to reference my chart and draw those congruencies. And it actually adds to the robustness of our container together. I don't think that I would have thought that that would be a thing that I could do. And like, that's why entrepreneurship is so cool because I know I'm not the first astrologer slash coach. And I wouldn't even call myself an astrologer because I feel like that that's a title that I take like very seriously. So I wouldn't even call myself that, but as somebody who speaks the language of astrology and is a coach, I'm not the first person to do that. But like for my people, they find a resonance in that, that like they couldn't go to anybody else to get. And there's no competition in our industry because they're like, oh, I know it's the, the way that this lady talks about the work. She's the one I want to work with. And that's why being so committed to healing through your own blocks and showing up in your authenticity and, and following that, that cadence and that truth is the only way to be successful because then you become a lighthouse for the mission and the people who have been looking for you can't find you if you're hiding away from that. Yeah. Mic drop on that. Yeah. You can't help people if you're hiding, like yeah. you're, you're here to shine energetically but also in the real world too. Yeah. Totally, sure. totally, totally. Wow. I'm going to have to look out for the oat milk. Cause yeah, I'm so disappointed with oat milk, not frothing. I like bought a frother <laughs> a few years ago and then quickly realized oat milk does not froth. <laughs> well, uh, they are, I think in a couple coffee shops in Miami. So they will okay. be headed up the state soon. Awesome. And, yes. and soon national distribution, soon national distribution, look out for the pink carton. <laughs> pink carton. Oh, I love it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I I love combining astrology and other methodologies like that in life and in business. Cause I know some people even based like when their launches are based, based mm -hmm. on the astrological ch uh, chart yeah. and that's so smart, like energetically, why wouldn't you do that? Like to just help yeah. with that momentum. Yeah. So. And also it's like, if you know that you're launching something when a bunch of things are retrograde, like you should expect tech issues, like expect them. It's not, yeah. I'm not saying don't launch then, but expect tech issues. Like it's going to happen. <laughs> be patient, be patient, be patient. <laughs> make sure you hit the record button. <laughs> yeah. As I do that, I'm like, oh, make sure that, all right. Okay. We are recording. <laughs> it's not, it's not retrograde. I know, right now. nothing. We're Saturn is retrograde, but Mercury's direct right now. <laughs> and deep breath, everybody. We're good. We're good. <laughs> um, but speaking of launching and, and scaling, all that kind of stuff, I know you're about to launch. This will probably come out in July, I think. We're recording this a little bit earlier. Business Witch. So for people, yeah. healers, people who want to help scale their business, I know you have a different kind of mindset strategy that you work we haven't talked about embodiment this whole episode. 
So I'm like, oh my gosh, we're at the end. We need to talk about it. <laughs> right. You just have a different approach to embodiment work and in, in, in yeah. business. Yeah. So Business Witch is my signature course. Um, we are relaunching it likely August, September, and it coincides with my podcast, Business Witch. So you can go listen to that. There's tons of great resources, free uh, money mindset stuff. You can hear from my clients directly. Really, really proud of the content over there. So lots of fun, free ways to engage. Um, also by the time that this comes out, I'm launching, it's a mini course, it's called business brain, and it teaches healers how to think about their business, like a business. Cause I think a lot of healers are in this for the love of the craft and they don't have the education or the understanding of really what is required from like the left side of their brain to turn that into something that's profitable and sustainable. So we have a little mini course coming out. People can go and pick that up and it will lead into the relaunch of Business Witch, which is a four module course. It goes over building your strategy from your why. So we do all mission and we've been getting really great feedback. We have the first cohort of people in it right now. And we've been getting incredible feedback from them about how this, the language of how it's written. It's a lot of like journal prompts and self-reflective prompts. And the way that I filmed all the video modules is to be sort of like a mock coaching session. So like I'll prompt you and then ask you to pause me and journal your responses and then unpause me and re-engage. So it's taught in a way that I think is like more interactive and, uh, more fun and like easy to pay attention to if courses haven't historically been your thing. But we've been getting great feedback from people that that's helping them crystallize their messaging in a way that was missing from just like, okay, how do you speak to your ideal client? It's like, this is going to go a lot deeper than that. Um, the second module is about building your ideal salary. So if you currently have a job and you want to replace your salary, there's like a pop and plug spreadsheet where you can put all of your expenses in, what you're currently making, what the price of your offers are, and you can sort of play with the numbers. Because I think another thing that is problematic in coaching is we teach people like get 10 clients and then you can quit your job. And it's like, first of all, get one client and see how that goes. And second of all, when you get 10 clients, are you going to feel safe enough to get 10 more clients to actually quit your job? So I think having the flexibility to look at playing with the numbers and the offer pricing and having to look at the money, which I think a lot of people avoid doing, will give you such a more strategic approach about like why your offers are priced what they are, why you don't need to negotiate or explain that, like you're replacing your salary. And then there's six different client acquisition methods in there that walk you through like your best sales pitch is the one that's rooted in your mission and the one that feels authentic to you, not like what I did in my business. So this gives people sort of like a choose your own adventure kind of thing. Uh, the third module is on trauma-informed care. So it's the basics of trauma-informed care that every practitioner who is working in a client-facing profession needs to have in order to be able to serve anybody ethically. It's not like you're not specialized. It's like the basic, basic ground floor, but like so many people don't do that work. And then they perpetuate things that I think gridlock people into a shame narrative. Like, for example, you must not be committed because you're not willing to pay in full up front. And it's like, no, this person has experienced systemic oppression and is dealing with a totally different money narrative than other people that you're coaching. And now you just shamed them. So the third module really talks about like what that looks like in coaching and how to rectify that. Um, and then the fourth module is all deep money work. It's all money mindset work and coaching on money through an intersectional feminist lens. You get office hours with me. So we get to hang out and it is, um, you can apply the cost to work with me one-on-one because -on -one. in my one-on-one -on -one practice, I don't necessarily work with newer coaches. I work with people who are scaling and who want to maximize profit and impact. So this is like the best way to get into the community and hang out with me. Everyone is awesome in there. All of my people will make friends with each other because we're all witches. So if you're interested in that, you should go check out uh, karakovacs.com slash course, get on the wait list and DM me on Instagram if you have any questions. Beautiful. Yeah, everything will be in the show notes. So you guys just a click away for everybody. But yeah, all of my business witches definitely check Kara out and the beautiful work she <laughs> does and her podcast as well. But yeah, thank, you. thank you so much, Kara, for coming on today. Was there anything else on your heart that you wanted to like talk about or close before we start to shut down the episode today? Just to tell people to believe in their mission, like mm -hmm. that having that in your heart, that's evidence enough. 
everything else is your opportunity for healing. The mission is all the evidence that you need to be successful in entrepreneurship. Beautiful. Well, thank you again. It was such an honor to have you on. And we close the episode the same way every week. How may we, the listeners, as a huge act of gratitude, be of service for you and return today? Oh, I love that. Uh, Well, if they are interested in staying in touch, I would head to the podcast and to my Instagram and just say hi. Let me know that they, they came from you. I love I love saying hi to people and welcoming them into my community and they can subscribe to emails at caracovax.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And if you guys, you know, subscribe to Kara's podcast, this podcast, share this episode or any episode you, you feel called to, to a loved one and also follow up when you feel inspired, like this is your intuition, no matter what you're listening to, reading, watching, whatever, like, don't just, don't just feel that calling take the action whether it's this show or whatever this is my mission like because beginning of my healing journey that's what I started to do I could hear myself through podcasts audiobooks, books whatever but to start to take the little action steps so there's my little soapbox today thank you so much Kara again it was so wonderful talking with you thank you